So my name is Alar Luchtsinger. Uh, I'm a venture capital investor at Velocity Capital. Uh, we um, we invest in early stage, kind of Series A, maybe pre-Series A uh, fintech companies, and we do that in, uh, in mainly in Europe and in Africa, uh, but also a bit in uh, actually in Asia. So um, yes, my name is Georg Ludwigsson. I'm the co-founder and CEO of of Manika. Manika is um, uh, one of the leading companies in white label digital banking solutions across across Europe. And, um, and Miniga is one of our portfolio companies. We've been an early investor in Miniga and we've been uh, Miniga for quite a few years right now. I think for me, um, I would say two things. Um, one, and, and we hear that in almost every talk here at Money 2020, is that it's um, for banks to stay relevant, they have to think about the customer experiences. And differentiation is all about creating superior customer experiences. So I think that has never been more clearly stated uh, than, than this, this year. I would also mention uh, open APIs and open banking. There's a lot of new companies, new services, uh, aggregating APIs, creating APIs. So I think modularization of banking is, is happening. Yeah, and I, I think uh, to, to add to that, I mean, I totally subscribe to them. And another thing, and as an investor that I look at and I think is, is, uh, is really remarkable in a way, is fintech has been long been a promise, and there was all these companies that were pretty small and they were doing interesting things, but what you really see now is that some of these fintech companies are really starting to make a big impact. So it's, uh, it's not only companies like Miniga that are now serving large customers and getting investments from, uh, uh, from, from major banks, but also, for example, you look at a company like Revolut, you have a CEO here that tells you that they've been existing for two and a half years, they have two million customers. And, um, and, and the subtitle of his, his little part at, at the show here was, banks, are you afraid right now? And, and I, I think in a way, what you see maybe for the first year is that really the breakthrough of some of these fintechs having a real impact on, um, uh, on the whole the financial services landscape. I think it's clear we are in the middle of uh, the early stages of a fintech revolution. There's so much investment now in uh, in uh, by banks, by by investors in in, in fintech, and um, I think it's never been more interesting times in, in in the industry. And I think we are seeing a revolution in uh, terms of uh, modularization of banking and creation of open APIs and, and access everything as a service. We're, we're in the early stages of banking as a service, breakup of the value chain. And the interesting thing is I think the jury is very much out. There will be many winners or, and, and, uh, and some losers and, and different kinds of strategies and players are emerging, uh, but very hard to predict uh, kind of who those winners will, will be at this stage. So I think one thing we can say that there's one sure winner here and that's going to be the consumer uh, of financial services because like what you really see now is that banks to compete with the revolutes of the world and the other fintechs that are really breaking through in the challenger banks they really need to get uh, their act together create experiences that are way more relevant and more interesting and um, uh, for customers than they are today and they are actually doing this they're investing very heavily in, in, um, in getting this done and you you slowly see it coming in your in your in your own banking apps, but this is gonna this is really gonna all come online in the coming years, and that together with of course new players that uh, that bring uh, uh, fantastic new services to market. So so I think it's going to be a really great period to be a banking customer, and and uh, I think the heat is on for uh, you know for banks, uh, and 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 I think that. that there's going to be some real new winners in uh, in the fintech space. Yeah, I would uh, second that. I mean, we already see much better and interesting customer experiences, user experiences, both in digital banking and in neo banks and new fintechs. And we're only uh, have only seen the beginning of this. We've seen many more services. So, so consumer is the only certain winner. Prices will go down. Services will improve. I think there will be winners and, and losers. I think uh, uh, it's hard to predict, but it's clear that uh, you see from the 
kind of cult-like status of, of, of Revolut and, uh, and some others that, uh, I mean, there's a lot of, I think that growth will continue. And, um, but um, some others have, have, have relatively basic services. So I think uh, you will see some clear winners and another growing not so much. Uh, but on, I, I think there is substantial room for, for neobanks. The big question is how fast can the incumbents respond? But I'm fairly bullish on the prospects of the neobanks. The competition yeah. is intense. Uh, absolutely. And, and, and one thing of the neobanks is they need a lot of money, a lot of investment. So I think what you will start seeing in the coming period is that some of them will get all the, all the money and get lots of investment and are, are you know can keep on growing and breaking out of the pack. But there will also be some that actually aren't you know not performing like their their peers and they will have difficulty raising all those tens of millions or hundreds of millions of euros and dollars that you need to actually build a bank like that. So I think that's what we'll see playing out. Um, some of these will really. There will be a pack of winners that will really break out, and I think some will have difficulties uh, continue to fundraise uh, what they need to, to, to keep up. I think definitely. I mean, PSD2 uh, is, I think, the catalyst for many of the things we are now seeing. That's giving investors confidence to invest that the data will be available. Uh, I think. So some of the emerging neobanks and, 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 and fintech companies are relying on PSD2. Uh, banks are also now, I think for the first time, you will see more aggressively using PSD2 to help their customers bring in data from, from other banks or even neobanks. So I think PSD2 really has, is, is the catalyst that is making things move faster. Uh, however, I also think that uh, in some sense it, it can be overstated. The PSD2 has its limitations. It's not real time. One of the key success factors of Revolut, for example, is the real time feeling of, of using it, which you won't have with, with data aggregated through, through PSD2. But it's really a catalyst and I think um, many countries, banks, fintechs will go beyond PSD2 uh, once PSD2 has, uh, has taken effect. It's having an enormous impact. I would argue that open banking and PSD2 is the most disruptive thing to hit banking for, uh, for decades. It's breaking up the value chains. I think we'll see a similar trend as we saw in the telco industry 15, 20 years ago, where you don't necessarily need to own the whole value chain. You can, and, and we see different strategies of banks emerging. We have neo banks, we have banks focusing on becoming a sales and marketing company and not necessarily having every product on their balance sheet. So packaging in, packaging, services and modules from fintechs and other banks and selling them as a kind of aggregator or a kind of recommending the best possible product for your customer, not necessarily owning that product all the way. And um, so that's where the early stage of that, that trend. And, and yeah, so it's, it's having an enormous impact. It's driving investment across the board. Yeah, and it will, it's, it's, uh, and I, I couldn't agree more. So the, it will force banks actually to, to choose, right? It, there is no, uh, with with open banking and PSD2 to really keep your customer, you need to to uh, to, to give that customer a great experience uh, because the customer can now really choose. You don't. It's not only the guys with big balance sheets that can actually give uh, that experience to uh, to a customer. So banks that really want to compete in this need to choose to to become very different kind of players than they are right now. So nobody knows exactly where this will go, of course, and uh, but that. Things will not be the same uh, looking back five years from now. That's totally clear. And, and we said it before, we'll have new players that are actually have become really, really large and, and, and very successful.